Oh, hi. Did you come for the Luminar Neo review? I will get to that really soon, but if you are a first time watcher, my name is Jackie Cordelis. I am a photographer based in Seattle, Washington, and I am a reviewer for Shot. I love reviewing photography related software and tools, anything that can be a desktop app or a mobile app that has to do with streamlining processes for photographers. I love it. And I want to talk to you all about it. Maybe you're watching this because you're new to editing photos and Lightroom and Photoshop are a little overcomplicated, which they are. Or maybe you don't want to deal with paying their monthly subscription fee. Or you know what? Maybe you're a photo editing veteran who just wants a plugin that can take your already edited photos to the next level. Well, good news then, because Luminar Neo is kind of like if Lightroom and Photoshop had a beginner friendly super baby with no subscription fee that could instantly and naturally, keyword naturally, sky swap, add overlays, and use AI to retouch your portraits, but still had all the general raw editing capabilities of Lightroom. If you're a longtime listener, you might know that I like to talk about AI so much. At the time this video is recorded, it's 2023, which means this past year has been absolutely bonkers bananas for AI. So if you're wondering why I'm freaking out about AI right now, it's because Luminar Neo has a lot of it. So yeah, there's a lot to be excited about here. Um, haven't even begun to scratch the surface. So we're just gonna dive right in. And I know that's kind of my tagline. I always say we're just gonna dive right in, but we're just gonna dive right in. All right, so when we first open Luminar Neo, this is what we're gonna see. The program is essentially organized into three different tabs, catalog, presets, and edit. And so our catalog is basically where we can organize our imported images and choose which ones we would like to edit or add our presets to. This next tab here, presets, is gonna take us to an area where we can add some of Luminar Neo's many presets. And the presets are categorized by purpose. And there are presets here for like portraits, landscapes, and even presets geared toward aerial images, which is really cool because I do drone photography and I love that they thought of me. If you're super brand new to editing, this is probably gonna be where you wanna start is in this presets menu. There's a lot of fun stuff here that uh, will basically let us edit our photos in just the click of a button. But if you're like me and you love the editing journey and like maybe you're a little bit of a control freak when it comes to your photography, there's also an edit tab where we can make even more adjustments to our photos. Some are real general ones like exposure and like color adjustments, but there are also a ton of incredible AI and retouching options in here that other programs like Lightroom and Photoshop just don't make as easy. On the right hand side, we can see here that we have four different tool categories, essentials, creative, portrait, and professional. So clearly there's a lot of options to look through in here, but fortunately we also have favorites at the top. So if we find a tool that we really love, we can just add to it by right clicking on any tool and just selecting to add to our favorites. You can see that I've already put Enhance, Relight, and Sky. Um, sky is the sky swapping one, which I'm about to get into. These are the ones that I like to use a lot, so I just kind of put them up here so I don't have to scroll for them. If you're using Luminar Neo as a standalone editing tool, the Essentials section is likely where you're gonna begin in the Edits panel. This is where you're gonna find all your basics that you'd also find in any raw photo editing software like Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw or, you know, et cetera, all, the, all those programs that we all use when we batch edit, um, as well as a few more features that go even deeper than most of those programs do. I would go through each and every single one of these tools if I could, but there are just so many incredible options in here and we'd be here all week. And I also kind of don't want to spoil it for you guys because I feel like 90% of the fun I had going through this program was the first time was like the initial adventure just running through it. I really want that for you too. So that being said, for this review, I'm going to actually go through the walkthrough portion of it scenario by scenario rather than down the line tool by tool. So I'm going to show you how I use Luminar Neo personally as a standalone photo editing tool for editing wedding portraits and you know doing all like the retouching. And we're gonna look at a few epic mountainous landscape heavy portraits for all of my fellow, I can't even talk right now, for all my fellow outdoor lovers and some photos with horrible harsh lighting as well. We can totally relight an image. Very cool feature, can't wait to show you. This photo is completely untapped. I have done no editing to it at all. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is go into my develop panel, do all my general edits, add some contrast, maybe increase the shadows a little bit so we can get some more detail in those darker areas. But I'm going to lower the blacks just a smidge so we can maintain our contrast. So since my sky is extremely overexposed and I can't really recover any of the detail, we're just gonna swap the sky out for another sunset. They're not gonna know. How would they know? So for this sky swap, I'm going to choose sunset number four, just because I think of all the other sunsets 
that I have available to me in Luminar Neo. This one probably most accurate to this scene. So we're going to choose Sunset 4, and it looks like there is a sun on the other side. So we can actually flip the sky orientation. So now you can see that the sun is in the image and perfectly on the horizon line. There's a lot of other features in here, but the one I'm going to go to immediately every single time is actually the bottom one. It's called Sky Adjustments. This is where we can actually make our sky swap just look a little more true to the image. And I like to do this first before I do anything else. The first thing I'm going to change in this panel is defocus because I did shoot this a little bit on the wider open side, maybe f2.0 or so. And you can kind of see that there's a little bit of focus fall off here. However, the sky isn't perfect focus. So by defocusing just a little bit, we kind of make it look a little more true to what the depth of field would be. I'm gonna skip right over grain because this isn't a particularly grainy photo, but I'm going to mess around with atmospheric haze. I'm gonna blast the heck out of this because even though this is a beautiful sunset, realistically, high, high dynamic range is a little fakey. So we're just gonna add about 90 to this here. Also gonna add quite a bit of warmth because the sky swap that I used was a little bit on the cooler side and we have some really warm tones in the shrubbery here. So we'll just really blast that as well. Okay, this is already looking fabulous, I have to say, but we can also do a few more things. So we can actually relight the scene, which is incredible. And this is one of those things that is really annoying to do in Photoshop is you swap in a sky and the rest of your photo doesn't look like it's naturally lit by that sky. So we can actually relight a little bit. You can see that it will sort of relight the scene. It makes all of this light come from the sun, which is really nice. We can also make the saturation a little more true. And then we can also relight the human in the image individually, which is so cool. That's one of those sweet AI features that we got going on. We can also do some other stuff like refine the mask if we feel that there are some like weird edges around the photo where this where the sky swap initially went. And one of the coolest things is this reflection feature. Check this out. We'll use a different photo for this one because this has to do with water reflections with sky swaps. Uh, this is from the same backpacking trip, only Michael is now standing in front of a pond. So when we think about, you know, what is in the reflection of the pond, a realistic sky swap would have something in there, right? So let's say that we add this uh, Milky Way galaxy here. And then we go down and we can actually increase the reflection amount and we can even blur the water a little bit because once again, this is a shallower depth of field. So realistically, the reflection in the water would not be nearly as crispy as the night sky. This is so cool and so much more realistic than anything I could ever personally do in Photoshop. So this is why I will always use Luminar Neo specifically for my sky swaps, if not for all the other amazing stuff it has. There's a ton of options just built right into Luminar Neo for sky swaps and all that. If you want something a little more specific though, don't worry, they have a marketplace where you can buy things like Northern Lights and look at, look at these cute lanterns, you guys, these are so cute. I would literally buy these just so I can incorporate these into my own photos. They're just adorable. We're now gonna go all the way down to this portrait section here. This is so flipping cool, you guys. We can add bokeh to our portraits if we want the background to be a little bit softer and we can do uh, facial relighting. This is actually one of my favorite tools because as you can see, as we increase this slider, it will naturally increase the highlights of the left side of her face. However, it's mostly paying attention to all of these shadows and it's not gonna blow out what's already bright, but it is going to bring in some of that natural light into the underside of her face here, which I really appreciate. We can also slim her face down, but I mean, look at her. She's, Cece is just so pretty as she is. Why would we do that? There's also a bunch of other little things that you might otherwise find in the Photoshop liquify panel as well. And then we can go into the skin area, which is very cool. We can just do a general overall edit and we can remove shine, which there's no shine in this photo, but the fact that we can, is pretty cool. And there's also some body edits as well. Again, this is sort of the, tools that you would find in the Photoshop liquify panel that actually manipulate a person's body shape. The last little option in here is so cool, you guys, it's called High Key, and it's another amazing example of why Luminar Neo has such powerful AI, because as we can see, as we increase this slider, it actually lights where the high key, so basically our, our primary light source, it will very naturally fill in where that would be affecting our subject, 
And also you can see it does light the background a little bit as well. However, it's not affecting all these beautiful shadow areas. We're just making more of a dramatic major light source in our image, which is so cool. You can also increase the blacks here. And what's really nice about this is it's filling in all of that like negative space on her sleeve there. So now we can actually start to see a little bit more fabric detail in her gown. Um, this is something I like to do with masking layers in Lightroom, but here it's just one slider. It uses the AI to do it for me. And that is so awesome and so much more convenient. Oh God, let me tell you. Obviously everything in this portrait section is sort of like just a slider and it's very AI. If you're hoping for a clone tool, don't worry. You can also retouch with that as well. It's just going to be all the way down at the very bottom here under the professional section. We can use the clone tool to take out very specific blemishes and flyaway hairs and all that stuff as well. For this next bit, I'm going to show you all about Luminar Neo's layers. So this is basically overlays that Luminar Neo has already built in the program and we can add our own and it just gives our photos a little bit more oomph. So for example, we can actually add more sparkler sparkle or that spark, spark try to say that 10 times fast more sparkler sparkles to our sparkler exit photos for us wedding photographers this is something that i know that people pay a lot of money for to get these sparkler overlays on photoshop and then you have to like move them around and everything luminar neo just has it built in and it's actually pretty slim in here check this out so let's take a look at yassi and tyler's sparkler exit photos they just look too happy for like the not sparkle amount that this photo has. So we can actually go over to the left hand panel in Luminar Neo and pick out a few different overlays here. So we've got sparklers and already you can see it's just adding so much more like glow and warmth to it. And we can add several actually. So if we wanna add a few more, we can just keep clicking and it will just overlay just like that. Um, I also love to add a little bit of the Stardust bokeh. I, I like it. A little bit more in sparkler photos than the sparkler overlays themselves because this sort of gives that like nice little peppered like look to it so we'll just add a few of those as well and already this is just looking so much more festive and celebratory and i love how this looks i would spend so much time doing this in photoshop i have spent so much time doing this in photoshop and i clicked four buttons in like two seconds so need i say more for these next few features, I'm going to show you guys how I use Luminar Neo on a wedding portrait. This is Yasi and Tyler again, except now we are inside their wedding venue, which is a greenhouse. We have some backlight here that I would like to enhance, but more on that later. And uh, I want to show you guys one of my favorite tools, which I have marked in my favorites. It's called Enhance. And this is really awesome because you can basically just raise the slider as much as you want, and it will kind of just fix the whole thing. So it's going to give you a little bit more dynamic range. It's going to give you a little bit more vibrance and it's just going to make the whole thing a lot crispier and just, it's going to give it that finished look. This is awesome for new editors who don't really understand what all the sliders do yet. If they just want to give it that little pop. I've also favorited this other tool called Relight. I really like this one because you can see here that we have brightness near. So it will actually use the AI to sense what your subject is and what is in the foreground of your frame. So we can actually light Yossi and Tyler just a little bit because they are a bit backlit and we can even lower the brightness of their surrounding area. So they pop, but the scene that they're in is not so much of a distraction. Okay, this, actually, this tool actually just took me by surprise as I'm filming this because I didn't know it could do this. So I'm going to also add a little bit of a sun ray because we can see that there's kind of some sun glowing behind Yasi and Tyler here. But if we click place sun in center, we can move it around and look at this. Every time we move it by a pillar, it will realistically block part of the sun rays. Look at that. That is insane. We can move it over here by the shrub and it will actually all go in that direction. I don't even know how this isn't marked as AI. This is such a smart intuitive feature luminar what you okay, whenever you're done having your sun ray mental breakdown like i just had i'm so excited about it we can also uh enhance the overall look and give it a little bit more a realistic overall lighting situation based on our sun ray we can increase and decrease the sun ray's length and we can also uh, enhance and and de-enhance the penetration so if we want it to be 
we really want a lot of that sun to come through that area, we can increase it. Or if we just want to leave it, we can do that as well. There's also a few sun settings, like the radius of which it glows, and a few other things like that. And we can increase and decrease the amount of sun rays as well, which is very cool. And if it's just not warm enough for the rest of your photo, you can increase and decrease the warmth of the sun and the rays individually as well. There's just so much stuff. I, th there's just, there's so much stuff in here. And what I love about Luminar Neo is that it's just so easy to use all of these tools and it's incredibly easy to learn. And beginners might encounter a few esoteric photographer terms that might take some getting used to, but as they would with any editing software. But the program is very straightforward and the AI takes the wheel on most of the tough parts of general photo editing. Nevertheless, I guarantee it will be significantly easier to learn the Lightroom or Photoshop. It contains so many of the very best parts of both programs and more. And for us pros that already know Lightroom and Photoshop, it honestly makes some of the most pain in the butt workflows like sky swapping and double exposures very simple, one click endeavors. In Photoshop, I've been having to like hand draw selections, refine the selections, and bring in separate sky images and place them manually. And then I have to like, try to make the color look realistic at the rest of the photo even with generative fill like it just doesn't look natural but with luminar neo it just is going to do it for me automatically with the ai and all i have to do is move a few sliders around and it really looks like whatever it's doing in the sky there is actually in the image it looks so real and i just i love that it has all these things that i don't have to do that manually in photoshop when we're all done editing our photos, we can just go to File and Export and select the options. And Luminar Neo is going to automatically optimize the image for us on export. We just have to enter our dimensions, resolution, and quality. And then we can export photos into several file types here. Like you can see, we have JPEGs, PNGs, and we can even do Photoshop's file type PSD. Wow. Um, so we're not just constrained to JPEGs or anything they we, we got options i will say that i have a pretty beefed out imac however i'm running out of hard drive space so lately a lot of the editing tools that require a lot of memory have been struggling but luminar neo runs really smoothly on my machine it only requires an intel i5 processor 10 gigabytes of hard drive space and 8 gigabytes of ram if you have no idea what that means and it's all greek to you basically it can run on most MacBooks or you know your general laptop or computer. You don't need a crazy tricked out machine to edit your photos. At the time I made this review, Luminar Neo only cost a one-time fee of about $150. And you can also opt to pay around $10 to $15 per month for their other monthly plans. But honestly, I would just recommend the lifetime fee because if you if you use Luminar Neo for like more than 10 months, you're already paying more than you would for the pro plan than if you were to just purchase a lifetime option. So considering recently I found one measly sparkler overlay on Etsy for $45, I'd say Luminar Neo is well worth it, even if just for the overlays alone. And that's not even talking about all the built-in presets, all the general editing panel stuff, all the other incredible AI tools, the sky swapping, all the retouching stuff. It's honestly such a fantastic deal. I can't even believe it's a thing. So basically, if you're looking at getting into photo editing for the first time and don't want to pay the $240 annual fee that Adobe's photography bundle costs, Luminar Neo is going to be the ideal, inexpensive, and easy to learn solution for your photo editing. And if you want to save even more, you can use my code SHOTKIT10NEO to save 10 bucks. And nowhere else currently offers a discount on Neo, so get it while it's hot. Alrighty, if, you, if you're like, too long, didn't listen, I'm going to give you a nice bulleted list of pros and cons. Row number one, and I have said this so many times throughout this review, Luminar Neo is absolutely incredible for beginning photographers and photo editors who are just learning this whole photo editing process. It is going to take you from one clicking to general photo editing to full on photo manipulation all in one program. It's insanely easy to use. It's amazing for that. We are also obsessed with the sky swaps in Luminar Neo. Oh my gosh. Not only are we swapping the sky instantly, but we have all of those relighting features to make it truly look natural. And when we use generative fill in Photoshop, which I know everyone's so excited about, we're not really getting to like change the rest of the image with it. We still have to do that manually. So we're really at Photoshop's mercy. And that's why I will continue to lose, use 
Luminar Neo for Sky Swaps specifically, if not for everything else, because it is so, I have so much more control and it's still so much easier. Third Pro, definitely that inexpensive lifetime license option for just right around 150 bucks at the time that this is recorded. So much better than paying $240 annually for Adobe. This is totally catering to those beginning photographers and casual creatives who just want to edit photos sometimes and not have to worry about any monthly. We love that. Okie dokie, let's talk about pricing now. And I think you guys are going to be pretty stoked because this is such an affordable tool. And last pro, it's just, it's honestly amazing for pros. Like I use Luminar Neo for all my sky swaps and for all of my sun rays and stuff like that. Um, you don't have to just be a beginner and you don't have to be a pro. This is literally a tool for everyone. Okay, cons list, because believe it or not, there are a few cons. I guess you could call them cons, I don't know. But the first one would be that Luminar Neo is really best for one-off edits. It's not super ideal for batch editing. So photographers who have to edit hundreds of photos per project probably are going to want to start in Lightroom and then bring any additional photos into Luminar Neo for all of your sky swapping, sparkler enhancement, etc. And then the only other con is that I really want to double click when I'm using the crop tool, but I have to hit enter. <laughs> it's not even a con, really. So those are all of my emotions about Luminar Neo. And I know I will definitely be keeping this tool around for quick and painless sky swaps and double exposures. I've said that so many times in this video at this point. I am just totally over the moon with how much simpler the AI makes it to do these adjustments at all. That would probably take me ages in Photoshop and watching YouTube videos and figuring out and learning and tweaking. And it's just like instantaneous here. I really hope that after watching this, it ends up being a regular part of your workflows as well. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. If you've used Luminar Neo yourself, let us know what you think. Your opinions also really matter to people viewing this review. And thank you so much for watching, you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.